There are several aspects of Harish Chandra, his life and his work on which one can reflect, his personality, the nature of his contributions and the position in mathematics, and his relation to the land of his birth. In fact, I say very little about any of these things, and I slip almost immediately after I begin into recollection, which may or may not be interesting to anyone. Uh, so my first recollection, not of Harris Chandra directly, but indirectly, was in 1961-62. At that time, I was just beginning to think about the Selberg trace formula and the various things that he'd done. And uh, I talked to a young faculty member at Princeton University, David Laudenslager, and uh, he was somehow more au courant of the things that were going on in the mathematical world at that time. And he su suggested to me that various people thought that the works of Harris Chandra would be relevant, but they weren't sure. So I was a very industrious young fellow, and I immediately began to uh, look at the work of Harris Chandra. What I was actually trying to do was compute an integral that occurs in the trace formula when calculating the dimension of spaces of automorphic forms. And then suddenly, one day I was walking home. I lived near, not very far from the campus, and I was walking home. And I can remember the exact spot. It's still there. There's no building has been built on the spot. And no, it hasn't been paved yet, but that will come. And I knew exactly what was going on. Namely, I had come across this function in uh, Aris Chandra, and uh, it was a matrix coefficient. So according to the theory familiar for, for finite groups, finite dimensional representation of finite groups, and to the theory that Harry Chandra was developing, the orbital integral of the matrix coefficient was the character of a, re of a representation, representation being the uh, holomorphic discrete series, now quite well known. So. Uh, that was my first encounter with Harris Chandra. Now, I can't resist. I, can't. I was writing this, and I, the, what I wrote after that, I left out at first. didn't even occur to me at first. But uh, let me recall it anyhow, because I did actually live very close to the campus. I lived on Bank Street, which is just across the street from the Nassau Street from the campus. And I did go home for lunch and for supper. and. Uh, I rather liked it there. Uh, I discovered many years later that Harris Chandra had, in early years, during the time that he came to the Institute with, uh, with uh, Dirac, also lived there. I don't know where he lived. I know where I lived. A very pleasant uh, place. Uh, many advantages that Princeton doesn't have now. Uh, and I, I recall also, I haven't recalled that for years, that I've once talking with a visitor from England, Cambridge or Oxford, I don't know where, he had occasion to speak, and I was a little dismayed, a little troubled, of the mean streets on the other side of Nassau Street. And I discovered for the first time that I lived in a mean street, which I didn't feel at the time, and I don't feel to this day. Later on, I shared at Harris Chandra as a neighbor on a street less mean with a lot of sycamores, and that was quite different. In any case, sometime after I discovered this theorem about, uh, that aided me in writing a small paper, I uh, wrote to Harris Chandra asking for some preprints. Uh, preprints were at the time still popular, still collected, and very useful. They don't exist anymore. And uh, he didn't respond. It was not surprising. But one day, at the they colloquium, the Vey Seminar, which took place every Wednesday, he came to me and he offered me the reprints, introduced himself. I suppose that in the meantime that uh, he'd heard about me either directly through Bachner or indirectly through Vey, and he thought it was worthwhile to give me the, uh, the reprints. Now, at the time, his work was considered very, was it was supposed that his work would be very useful, but it was also considered very difficult. So there were very few people who ventured to, to understand it. Uh, I, uh, so that when it was discovered that 
I had actually read some of the papers and understood them, I became very useful. I could act as referee, I could act as reviewer, and as for Harris Chandra, I could act, so to speak, as an interlocutor who, to whom he could explain his, his re most recent results during his, an afternoon walk. And Harris Chandra, at that time, had already discovered that uh, his heart was weaker than it should be, and so, and the, and the doctor had already recommended that to exercise more. In any case, as it turned out, I was not much in demand, either as a reviewer or as a referee, or even as uh, someone to con converse with Harris Chandra. Now, I continue, actually, to talk a little bit about Harris Chandra. As I say, his works are not really well understood now, although there are excellent introductions to his work, like those of Knapp. Nonetheless, I fear that they're not so widely read as they should, have, should be. Now, in many ways, I mean, of course, my, my acquaintance with Harris Chandra that began then was very valuable in, in, in many respects, but, and in particular, he encouraged me as a way in which I had not been, I hadn't been encouraged that often. My beginnings were somewhat obscure, but I arrived at Princeton thanks to the recommendation of Edward Nelson, and I uh, was given a position right away with no papers, and then I, and that was actually the great event of my own life, uh, was uh, encouraged by Bachner. And even later on, by Harris Chand, and I would just, just let me recall that, because it's unusual, it cost him a lot of work. Namely, he can, in, uh, 1967, uh, 1967, 66, 67 was the year in which I was quite discouraged, in which I pretty much decided to abandon mathematics. And uh, although, it, actually, it turned out to be a very good time because uh, out of despair, it was something worthwhile. But he, he told me at that time that uh, he'd recommended me, this was, a, I assure you, a very a great shock and surprise to me that to a position at the Institute. Now, he wasn't able to convince his colleagues at the time, but nevertheless, it was very flattering and very encouraging and uh, that Harris Chandra actually thought that well of me. And I should say, I should add that he had to work very hard to persuade his colleagues, who eventually were persuaded vague because I made extensive use of the vague group, apparently, but he had to give a series of lectures explaining what I had done about Eisenstein's series. Uh, and he, so that meant he had to work through what I had done, and I guess my writing was as obscure then as it is now. And uh, so that was, so to speak, a, a sacrifice and an effort out of the ordinary that he made on my behalf. Anyway. Now, You know, his relation to me aside, which is probably not of so much interest to anyone, there is something, there is a problem that, uh, with which one is faced, and that is that I do not think Harris Chandra is recognized for the mathematician he is. I think that someday somebody has to look carefully at the field, you know, infinite dimensional representations of, of Lie groups, of reductive Lie groups, see what a difference Harris Chandra has made, and uh, try to determine that just what, his real, just what his position in mathematics is. It's a field, after all, in which there are a lot of distinguished names. I wrote them down here. I recall them. The Dedekind, Lee, Cartan, A.D. Cartan, Rubinius, Schur, Siegel, Weil, Hermann Weil, Eric Hecke, and sometime one should, I don't say one should, but it would be very good if someone would write a serious book explaining the history of these subjects and explaining the role of Harris Chanda. Huh? And how does he, as a mathematician in the second half of the 19th century, compare with others? He certainly was one of the very best. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'd hesitate to use the word, not because it's, uh, might be false, but because it's a word that frightens me too much, that he was one of the greatest. But I don't think that can be established in even a provisional way or uh, 
a rough way without a great deal of effort that I myself have never made. So, and, and somehow he has to be compared. I think it would be good for mathematics as a whole if someone could write a knowledgeable book about him and about these other practitioners that compares them with uh, mathematicians in other fields like number theory or algebraic geometry, in which there are more practitioners and therefore a larger audience. I guess a definitive answer is out of the question, but some reflection would be, pro would be appropriate. Let me give an example. I don't know whether everyone will agree with this example that in my view, the key to the study of general Shamor varieties after their algebraic geometric definition is Harris Chander's theory of the discrete series, supplemented by Wilfred Schmidt's generalization of the Brevet Bott theorem, the non-compact groups. Now, if you, lead, if you read the Wikipedia presentation of this subject, which is a presentation that improves with time, I'm happy to say, nonetheless, the, the authors of the present text are Seem, seem to be absolutely unaware of the relation between Shamor varieties and the discrete series. I would like someone, not me, but someone to improve the presentation, to examine the history of the subject and improve the, represent, the presentation. And there are various other things where I think the effort that he made for the study of the representation of uh, reductive groups over R, C, uh, ha has not been maintained at the same level. It's first of all, to some extent, for piatic groups. But there, I think there are a good number of people who are doing their best to create a, a theory of, for piatic groups that's comparable with Harris Chandler's theory. But in theory of representations of a reductive group over a local field, in the sense of an, uh, Field over the field of, of Laurent's series is, is I think, uh, I, I, I don't think enough attention has been paid to it. And it hasn't really been touched, in fact, in a serious way. Although it's, it's a natural extension that arises in the arithmetic, in the geometric theory of automorphic forms. Now, let me make another remark, which is not off the which is not off the top of my head. I've thought about it a little bit, but the, the last thing I say is uh, not to be taken too seriously. So, I'll indicate a personal preference, and that is that as a mathematician, I like the theorems that follow from theories. For example. The law of quadratic reciprocity from the theory of cyclotomic equations. There are other proofs, of course, for the law of quadratic reciprocity, but I'm more comfortable with, with it as a part of the theory of cyclotomic equations, which have a, a natural simplicity. Or the chern gauss bonnet theorem in differential geometry, or Fermat's theorem, which, result, which is a consequence of the theory of automorphic forms. Now, I like to think that the Riemann hypothesis and similar hypotheses will follow someday from the general theory of automorphic forms and their L functions. And Harris Chandler was one of the pioneers, not the first, but perhaps the major one, perhaps the major pioneer, in the theory of representations of reductive groups. And I think they'll play, if one can ever prove the Riemann hypothesis in that way, what we have learned from him will be an important thing, part. Now, there were, in the initial, what I said initially was there are three aspects of Harris Chandra's life, none of which I have talked about. I haven't talked about his personality, I've talked briefly about the nature of his personalities, but I haven't talked about the relation to the land of his birth. These are because they are both puzzles to me. The land of his, it's clear that the land of his birth should be a puzzle to me because it's not the land of my birth, and it's not a country with which I have a great deal of familiarity. Uh, I observed once uh, Harris, uh, that Harris Chandler's work on harmonic analysis was largely built on his command of advanced calculus. This doesn't mean that he didn't know a lot of mathematics, but I think he learned that mathematics later. The, the, uh, the, the, the basic techniques, the basic techniques which were always his, his, so to speak, last resort or first resort when he was trying to prove, actually 
actually to prove something, came from his childhood and youth. Now, so these are techniques that he learned in India. Now, he never, reached, so far as I know, returned to India in a serious professional way. And I would be curious to know why. I suspect, but I don't know, that it had something to do with his personality and the situation in India. I myself am a Canadian, so I, I'm familiar with, there are misunderstandings that can arise in a small country, and I think England, uh, India at the time uh, of his youth was to be regarded from a mathematical point of view as a small country. I very well think that something may have happened that dis discouraged him from attempting a career in India, but I don't know. I just would like to know about it. He was also very, in, in mathematics, very focused. I think to some extent in his life in general, very focused. And although he came from, a, I think, what must have been a very cultured family, North Indian family. And, uh, and, but sometimes there were, uh, there were weak spots. He, he told me once, that his uh, mother, who spoke, I think, Hindu, Farsi, and uh, Urdu well, observed that uh, Hindi of the younger generation was decaying. But she assured him that his Hindi, although not so good as it might be, was much better than that of his, uh, the other members of his generation. And he seemed to attach some pride to that. Although he assured, he told me in, in the same conversation or in another conversation that he thought that one language was enough for anyone. Now, that's, a, that's a statement that uh, took me aback then, takes me aback now. I don't know how seriously he meant it. In uh, any case, that's about all I was going to say today. I probably put, took more time than I was supposed to, and I thank you for listening, and I hope what I said was not too confused.